In this video, we will take an in-depth look at products within the stock area of the web portal. Departments and products are both required in order to use register. At its base level, a product is either an item or service you sell via the register. To manage products, click stock on the top bar and click products from the sub-menu. The main window will display a series of buttons for adding products as well as importing and exporting your products. This is then followed by a search area and finally a table containing all the products that have been created. You can edit an existing product by clicking the pen icon, view a product stock levels across your stores using the list icon, transfer stock between stores by clicking the arrow icon, duplicate a product using the copy icon, disable and enable products by clicking the cross or tick icons, and finally delete a product using the trash can icon. To create a new product, click the New Product button and complete the product form. You must first give the product a name and enter a unique SKU, which is the product ID. You have the option to enter a barcode for the product so that it can be scanned. Then enter the department the product belongs to by selecting the appropriate department from the list and if applicable, select a supplier from the list. Register supports a number of product types, all of which behave in different ways. When selecting a product type, some additional fields will appear on the form. Container products are used when selling measured goods. The container is the stock value you are removing measures from. For example, a bar selling draft beer would enter the keg or barrel details, such as a 100 litre keg of Foster's beer. A container product is always required if selling fixed measures, such as pints of beer. When adding a container product, you must enter what the stock container is equal to, for example, 100 litres. You then have the option to enter your buy price, but must enter the applicable tax rate. Department products are used when recording a generic sale against a department. These are also known as dump codes. These are useful if you do not have all your products loaded onto the register, and is how most retailers operate traditional cash registers. As department products have no fixed price, the only field you must enter is the applicable tax rate. You also have the option to add in a buy price and commission if applicable. A fixed measure product is the individual units being sold from container products. Again, using the bar example, you would search for the container product Foster's and enter the price per pint. This will then create a product of one pint of Foster's beer, but will deduct one pint of stock from the 100 litre keg or barrel. After selecting the container product, you must then enter the fixed measure value, for example one pint. Then, enter the price for that measure and applicable tax, and again, enter the commission if applicable. Manual products are used when the price of an item varies, but not against a measurement or volume. Manual products are typically used when providing services where the cost might vary depending on the time or effort involved. When selecting a manual product on the tills, register will prompt the user to enter the price. As manual products have no fixed price, the only field you must enter is the applicable tax rate. You also have the option to add in a buy price and commission if applicable. Measured products allow you to sell items in varying measurements. These are typically used when selling items that are weighed, such as fresh fruit and vegetables, or items that are cut to length such as material. When selecting a measured product on the till, register will prompt the user to enter the measurement and will then calculate the item price automatically. When adding a measured product, you must enter the price per measurement. This allows you to set a simple price, such as £1 per metre, or for weighed items, £1.25 per 250 grams. Again, you can optionally enter a buy price and commission, but must set the tax and price. Finally, we have regular products. These are standard fixed price items which are by far the most common. Like all the other product types, you have the option to enter a buy price and commission, but must enter a tax rate and price. No matter what product type is being used, you can either enter the price excluding or including tax. The web portal will calculate and display the other value in the form once the tax rate has been selected. The remaining fields are all optional, including the product image. To add an image to the product, click the white button and locate the image on your machine. After selecting the image, click open and the image will be displayed on the form. The only other fields worth mentioning here are the reorder limit and print order receipt. The reorder limit allows you to enter a minimum stock quantity. If you enter 5 as an example, as soon as this product has 5 or less in stock, it will appear in the low stock report. Finally, the print order receipt drop down menu allows you to specify if the product should be printed on an order receipt. By clicking the drop down, we can select either none, 
primary printer or secondary printer. This is typically used within hospitality for sending food orders to a kitchen printer. When you have finished entering all the product details, scroll down and click the save button to return to the product list screen. If you need to add multiple products, it is typically quicker to do this via an import. To import products, you first need to prepare an import file. This can be done by clicking the download template button. The web portal will prepare a file for you to work with. Click the download XLS button and open the file once downloaded and click yes on the info prompt. Your import template will open in Excel. Click enable editing and maximize the column widths. You will see a table with the same elements we saw on the product form. Enter the information for all your products or copy it across from another worksheet. The only difference here is you must enter the word yes in column A in order for the web portal to import each product. After entering all your data, save the file ensuring it is set to an XLS document. Moving back to the web portal, to import the product import file we just created, click the Import Records button and click Import Product Records from the submenu. Then, click the white button to launch the open window. Navigate to the location on your machine where your file is, select the appropriate file and click Open. The web portal will first check the contents of the file to ensure the data is valid. When ready, tap the Import Products button to start the import. After the import is completed, tap the Close button. We will now see all our products listed in the table below. If you need to edit your existing products in bulk, you also have the option to export your products. To do this, click the Export Records button and click Export Product Records from the submenu. The web portal will prepare your file. Click the Download XLS button and open the file once downloaded and click Yes on the info prompt. You will see an Excel spreadsheet with the same header we saw in the product template file. The only difference is all the information has also been entered for your existing products. You can make changes to the products but cannot change the SKU. After setting the import product column to yes, save your changes and you can import the file as we did before. You can also edit individual products within the web portal by clicking the pen icon. This will load the product form where you can change any details. After making your changes, click save to return to the product list screen. To view a product stock levels, click the stock list icon. This will then load the stock screen for the selected product and the table will list the stock values for each store. To edit the stock levels, click the edit pen icon for the applicable store and the adjust stock quantity screen will be displayed. From here, you can enter a new stock value by entering the new stock quantity in the stock adjustment field. Then, select a stock adjustment reason from the list and click adjust to update the stock value. You can also adjust the stock values in bulk using an import file. We cover this in detail on the stock management overview video. The arrows icon on the product screen allows you to start a stock transfer. Clicking this will open the stock transfer window. Here, you must enter where the stock is being transferred from and to. It will automatically display the quantity available in the store you are transferring from. You can then enter the stock quantity you wish to transfer along with any notes. For more details on stock transfers, please see the stock management overview video. You can duplicate a product within the web portal by clicking the copy icon. This is particularly useful if you have several variations of the same product set up, for example, different flavoured lollipops. After clicking the duplicate button, the product form will load and all the information will be copied across from the original product. The only missing information will be the SKU, as this must be unique. We will now go ahead and enter a new SKU and make any other changes to the product and click save. If required, you can also temporarily disable a product by clicking the cross disabled icon. This will remove the product from all tills preventing any further sales of that item. To re-enable a disabled product, simply click the enable tick icon. Disabling products can be of particular use if you have seasonal products that you do not wish to sell out of season. You can also disable and enable products in bulk via an import file by changing the status column to disabled or enabled. To delete a product that is no longer required on the system, simply click the trash can icon and confirm the action on the message prompt. After carrying out this process, the product will no longer be available on any till but will still appear in the applicable reports if sales were recorded against them. If you cannot locate a specific product, you can filter the product list using the search tool. 
you can search against the product name or SKU. To do this, click in the search product area. Enter your search criteria and click the search button. The search status will display how many results have been found and the table will update with the matching products. Don't forget, after updating your products, you will need to complete an update data on the tills to receive the updated information. Further information on managing products can also be found in your user manual as well as our other videos. And if you still have any questions, please get in touch with your solution provider who will be able to offer further assistance.